and MIT. Now at NTU, Ramamurthy sir teaches and does research in the broad area of mechanical behaviors of materials and has co-authored 250 papers in peer-reviewed international journals. His research is recognized through the Swarna Jayanti and J.C. Bose National Fellowships of Government of India. He also holds a position as a professor in the Department of Materials Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science. He is an elected fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, the Indian National Academy of Engineering, and the World Academy of Sciences. In 2011, he was awarded with Shantiswarup Patnagar Prize for Science and Technology, the highest science award in India in the engineering category. In 2015, he was awarded the World Academy of Sciences Prize in the engineering category for his fundamental contributions to the understanding of deformation, fatigue, and fracture in several classes of new materials. We are honored to have you here, sir. So I request Professor Ramamurthy, sir, to enlighten the audience with his address. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chandra Drusya. Uh, very nice. I, I, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we are able to. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, let me try to figure this uh, uh, out so that I would like to share. Uh, uh, can you help me with sharing, please, uh, here? Uh, sharing the PPT. It's, you can see the PPT? Not yet, sir. Not yet, okay. Um, okay. Okay, just give me a second. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, you can. Okay. Okay, thank you. How do I do this presentation? Okay, here. Okay, that I know. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, and uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my deep uh, gratitude to Professor Narayan Rao Garu for uh, inviting me to interact with you through this medium. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I'm quite excited to talk to all of you. I wish, uh, to be very honest, I wish it was in a physical space so that I could see you, talk to you, and you could also ask questions about me. But uh, such are, you know, we are in a strange time now. Hopefully, things will get very quickly soon back. Uh, very good. So, um, uh, for most of you, I'm assuming, are from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, just wanted to give you this information. I grew up not very far away from here. Uh, some of you may know uh, a town called Bhimavaram, uh, which is about 90 kilometers from here. That is where I grew up. So, uh, that way, SRM AP is... Uh, very dear to my heart because I come from this region. I can speak Pakka uh, Telugu as anybody can. And uh, but uh, in keeping with the wider audience, we will only speak in English, right? Um, the other uh, thing that I wanted to tell you is I studied in uh, engineering in Andhra itself uh, in Vishakapatnam. Uh, uh, so, uh, for uh, many, uh, before I moved on to other pastures. So, uh, uh, I am used to giving technical talks, but this is a orientation talk. So, this is all aimed at uh, people who are all starting their engineering uh, journey, uh, university journey in particular. So, uh, let me, I know, so I will sort of tell you what I am excited about uh, uh, in terms of what, uh, current challenges. Uh, but before that, let me tell you some few things. So uh, first and for foremost, I would like to welcome all of you to university education. Okay. Now, uh, what is, how is it different? How is why is it a call? Why is it called university? Why not a college or whatever? Right? University education is supposed to make your mind uh, universal. So you, um, that's one reason why you call it university. Very broad. Uh, uh, thing you you are all supposed to learn okay and uh, this uh, proverb that i uh, saw um, attracted me see uh, teachers open the door but you must enter it yourself the you know the room that the teachers open you know what the what is the door uh, that they are talking about or the room is about the knowledge right so the acquiring of the knowledge see when you are before in the you know before coming to the university 
um you are told what to learn what to read and you learn that much and then go and solve the exams at university in principle you not only learn selected subjects but you also learn a lot of other things do remember i think most of you are teenagers 18 17 16 8, 19 i know but by the time you leave this university you are all men and women all right you are 22 23 21 so uh, essentially the university will mold your personalities because you you know you have been at home your parents told what to do and what not to do and everything but by the time you graduate from this university in four years time with flying colors you will be men and women uh, car you know determining your destinies uh, destinies so that is why i think this university is what you want to maximize in terms of uh, your potential so this is the foundation stone laying uh, time for you you know uh, for your personality for what you will be as a future citizen of this country of the world at large and what you will do as a successful person okay so the university teachers will open this door for you okay the university in general will also open the door but it is up to you what you make of it that is the first key thing that you have to recognize okay this is that's where it's fundamentally different from what you have done before okay now there are two things that i uh, learned okay so or i keep uh, as principle for myself um they are excellence and time okay so i really want you to excel in something so what is excellence is the gradual result of always trying striving to do better right you do something and just not be happy with it you try to do even better pat riley by the way is was the chicago bulls coach which won which dominated uh, the nba for several seasons uh, in the 90s and uh, early 2000s he was also la lakers coach so uh, why did i talk why do i talk about excellence see um if you want to make a mark right in the world right as a as an individual you want to leave a mark you need to really be excellent being average will not cut anymore you need to really be excellent and excellence just does not come easy right so you need to really try try strive to do better okay why do i uh, uh, what do i mean by suppose you know it it doesn't meet, need to be only studies okay so if you are interested in programming or if you are interested in running or if you are interested in some other activities be um, try to be excellent first you be the best in your class then be the best in your batchmates which enter and then be the best at the university be the best at in the state be the best in the country and so on so that is how you achieve excellence see we see um uh, for, for example this from the same state pv sindhu right uh, winning two successive medals at uh, olympics uh, i do not know whether you have, any of you have seen her coach uh, mr gopi chand uh, talked about you know uh, the training starts at 4 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning and every day they will have training uh, same thing with saina nehwal so and you reach those pinnacles of getting olympic medals etc only by such hard work and also trying and trying to do better and better so you just it's not that oh i you know she is not happy with uh, by winning you know uh, say championship in andhra pradesh she wanted to win in india in the world and that's how they get the laurels and they get the recognition so you pick up whatever you like playing chess or writing um, poetry or anything you know it doesn't need to be uh, a specific thing you know you pick something which you think you have passion for you need uh, to achieve excellence you need passion and uh, and you, you that you should enjoy sachin tendulkar for example enjoyed playing cricket and that's why he lasted for such a long time 
and try to do better and that excellence will not come simply by sitting and dreaming it you have to work for it okay the other uh, aspect that i i particularly want to mention um, my son just graduated from engineering so and uh, seeing him and when i see uh, young people a lot of people are spending too much time on social media etc so time management is absolutely critical as far as i see it okay because once you spend the time right uh, spend it away you will never get it back so you for example uh, you will be never be again 15 years old right or never be 16 once you uh, finish uh, once you enter into 17 so uh, time will never come back whereas money uh, you even if you lose money you spend the money you can always earn back right time you cannot so be very wise with time uh, that doesn't mean you don't have fun don't do other activities have some discipline if you say okay i want to do certain studies for some time i want to go play sports or i want to hang out with my friends do that but manage the time very well and just don't waste time because you cannot earn it back okay these are uh, the two aspects i hope you will remember and try your best because all of you have the potential to be the excellent um citizens of this uh, world and i think if you do this you can reach re- realize that potential now <clears throat> uh what are the key technical challenges that world faces what are the exciting stuff that one sees so professor narayan rao garu has asked me to talk about this and so um i am a materials engineer a mechanical engineer uh kind of uh, materials engineer and i will talk about this perspective right you know um, not in instead of covering the entire gamut of this thing okay so uh one of the key challenges that your generation will face is the uh the climate change that is happening rapidly and the consequences of it we already started seeing you know flooding and earth you know the uh, california fires a lot of these kinds of things are happening you know you, you must have seen hyderabad had such heavy rains that the system could not uh, the 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 drainage system etc could not take and uh, i think a few days back they had a lot of flooding new york city had so much flooding and we will start seeing these kinds of activities more and more frequently okay so we uh, as human race have to um, counter this we have to do something about it uh, everybody is re- uh, recognizes this so uh, for example uh, now if you look at uh, materials perspective uh steel steel is everywhere right you know for example the the bike you uh, ride or the car you have driven in or uh, um, the spoons that you use uh, for eating food the plates are made of steel everything you know the buildings you live in uh, the concrete plus steel rebar right so steel is everywhere and on average apparently each person on earth on average uses 240 kilos of steel every year okay you need that much steel okay that's a lot of steel okay um so and um 1.83 tons of carbon dioxide is emitted for every ton of steel produced okay so that means the steel uh, product production uh, is one of the major polluters in the world uh steel and a- actually aeroplanes is another uh, major polluter by instantly now how do we counter this so people are already talking about it thinking about it so uh, one thing that came about is instead of uh, b- this is because we use coal right uh, coal is used to reduce uh, steel is available as an I- oxide iron oxide and uh, so if north of uh, andhra pradesh in orissa border etc you have a lot of this uh, ores right iron oxide ores and uh, now so people instead of using coal uh, they are using hydrogen uh, to directly reduce the uh, iron oxide to make iron okay and this is what green steel uh, sweden you know you see this uh, title i just see this date um, thursday 19th august 2021 so 
it is not um, it's about a two week old story right so uh, swedish company uh, uses hydrogen uh, to make directly steel so that the carbon footprint is reduced so these are the kinds of challenges that one you should think about you know how do we um, you know avert this climate crisis by the way this you see this here um, the pointer options you see uh, the climate crisis this is within the climate crisis thing so climate change is here and we need to uh, do something about it and young people like this like you have to think very seriously about uh, how best to counter this because your future and our future as humanity to together will very much depend on this uh, countering the climate change and this is one example i cannot uh, of course give you all the examples but just one example as to how people are thinking about it so try your best try, try to learn about these kinds of things and uh, expand your knowledge horizon and see how best you can contribute because it's not because you you know you are uh, being generous or whatever it is if in your own best interest because if we want to live on this earth in a comfortable way um, have uh, natural cycles and monsoons etc we need to counter this climate change somehow or the other now the other thing that is happening uh, is uh, uh, materials discovery okay uh, now uh, previously it used to take a long long time if you discovered a new material it will used to take forever now with computational um, power you know you see the when the computers first came uh, 1000s of our what computational power we have in our cell phone not not most sophisticated apple uh, i i i13 or whatever it's just even the moderate simple one um 1000s of that computational power uh, required a room size now uh, the computational power we have at our tips of the hand are so much so people are thinking of using simulations and then um, machine learning you know big data etc this is not just only in computer science it's across for materials discovery for uh, predicting the human behavior for predicting biological systems a lot of that kind of stuff is happening so uh, for example we ourselves are interested in uh, accelerating the materials discovery uh, through computer simulations from database databases and machine learning so that we can come up with new chemical compositions uh, which then can be experimentally validated so if i for example as a metallurgist discover a new alloy uh, in 1960 uh, it would take up to 1990 30 years before it gets implemented in a narrow space structure now we want to do this in 5 years because really we if unless we accelerate this uh, we cannot uh, counter this uh, for example climate change or the other uh, stuff that is happening okay so this is one other area where computational power and experimental work this uh, machine learning databases uh, uh, big data mathematical tools like this are all coming to enhance the uh, material discovery um so for example i uh, just show you a slide here uh, please uh, don't worry about it uh, about the too many of the details for example we ourselves we used machine learning plus big data for predicting properties you know this is a paper we wrote uh, for example these are uh, where what we do is we train the computers we train the uh, computers with a little bit of data then a little bit of simulated data so that it can actually predict uh, properties on its own so these are the kinds of exciting things that are happening in engineering uh, uh, where so you are all now joined computer science engineer mechanical engineer uh, uh, civil engineer right that is changing again you know so if now everybody works on a mechanical engineer i am a mechanical engineer right i do data bases i do uh, machine learning tools so uh, it's not just enough in modern world uh, learning only one engineering disciplines problems it's you need to have a much broader view you need to know what is latest happening in computer science 
and like, likewise computer science people need to have a good idea what is happening suppose if you join big basket after your engineering or a google right so um, or an amazon you see amazon they are interested in uh, going to the space and uh, jeff bezos went recently right um, so big basket if you are uh, if you join you are a computer science graduate but you still need to know big basket is this um, um, online grocer so you need to know what are the prices of uh, say uh, rice and what are the projected you know is there going to be a drought or is going to be uh, how is the crop going to come you have to have a, a much larger world view if any for your own success in big basket same thing with google same thing any other company that you can think of so that is where this uh, uh, handling the big data and these kinds of things will be very useful okay now <clears throat> Uh, there are other lots of stuff, exciting stuff that is happening in engineering, um, materials engineering, for example. Um, uh, there are materials that will self-heal, right? So suppose if uh, there is a wound that is made on your skin, right? Uh, so uh, you take a little good care and keep it dry, it will heal, right? Nature has this ability. If you uh, do some damage somehow, uh, if it is not a serious one, it can heal. But man-made materials cannot heal themselves, uh, right? If you fracture a glass, right? You basically take a plate of glass and drop it, it shatters. There's no way it can, you can put it back and it can heal, right? It doesn't happen. Uh, so you have to melt the glass or piece of metal and recast. Now, but people are uh, coming up with uh, self-healing materials. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of self-healing materials that are coming up. Okay. There are smart materials, um, things which remember their shape, shape memory, as we call it, and so on and so forth. So lots of different exciting new materials are being discovered, being used, not just for engineering applications, but for also biomedical implants, mm -hmm. right? You may have um, many, uh, some relatives or grandparents who may require a knee replacement surgery, and it's being done routinely nowadays, okay? And uh, so the implants are you, for example, in your uh, dental uh, thing, later on, what you may need a cap, you may need to go through root canal. So lots of lots of new uh, materials are coming up and uh, there is quite a lot of excitement uh, coming. So, and this is where materials genome, you know, instead of, uh, so this is where a discovery of new materials in an accelerated uh, way is happening. Now, I would like to spend a few minutes on 3D printing, okay? Uh, the reason is this is something that we are work on. Instead of giving general uh, things, I thought I'll talk about 3D printing, okay? Now, uh, so 3D printing of metals in particular, okay? Uh, this is not going to be a technical talk, just to illustrate taking one example and how uh, exciting new engineering is, is what I want to talk about. So, um, you see around, okay, most important structural materials have been and continue to be our metals and alloys. So this is the Guggenheim Museum, Museum in Bilbao uh, in Spain, right? But we do not need to go. You look around. Everywhere uh, you will see steel or aluminum or copper wiring, you know, etc. So maybe it's not openly visible. But if not, uh, otherwise also there is everywhere. Structural materials means these are the materials which carry load, okay? The reason that happens is because, and if you actually uh, look at it, right? Even human uh, civilization development, right? First uh, is in terms of materials first. You see stone age, right? Here the material is stone, right? So, and then uh, when uh, people progressed, uh, humanity progressed, you have Neolithic age. After that, we are called Bronze Age, Iron Age. Okay, these are basically defined by the kind of metal that you were using, you know, Bronze Age and Iron Age. In fact, in India, in the Iron Age, we were well advanced compared to the rest of the world. We were making the uh, Ukku, wood steel, you know, the, the steel that uh, people used to make swords where uh, the steel was made in India 
and you will be surprised to know actually the good quality was made in telangana region okay ukku uh, which is called woods and the damascus swords were made uh, from that steel and they were the finest of those right so um, now we are in industrial age after the uh, iron age and we are industrial again um, industrial age uh, started with when steel making became industrialized bessemer converter came in and uh, blast furnace making of steels and that allowed people to construct uh, ships rails uh, locomotive engines and so on that is how uh, industrial age came in okay now so let's go back to metals and metals the reason metals are everywhere uh, one of the uh, the industrial age is uh, important material is metals because we can um, do all this right we can cast them we can forge them we can roll them we can extrude them we can bend them ca- cut them stamp them and twist them that basically metals are uh, you know uh, you can make whichever shape you want you and that is what i illustrated here you see you can make nice fine jewelry uh, very intricate artwork uh, that you see in that in this nataraja or you can think of a, a shell this is the dreamliner boeing 787 dreamliner uh, and uh, the shell that is also made of metal you see the titanium rings and then uh, this uh, shell or watches you know the uh, in the internal parts are made of metals and this is just copper wiring in a integrated circuit right so metals are everywhere but the most important see you can make also the same things with glass but the thing is we don't use glass structures simply because they are brittle whereas metals you can drop them you can no need to worry so if you think think of a car made with made with glass a car made with metal metals are only you know cars are made with metals only right now if it is made with a glass right the in the structure part of it right you will not want to drive because it will shatter and break in very quickly uh, so you want it to last for 100000 kilometers or 2 lakh kilometers whichever so metals are very tough as well that is the thing to remember okay and um, conventional manufacturing of metals right it uses all these things these are all casting rolling forging welding all these are the the manufacturing sector and they create a lot of employment generate a lot of employment but they are not very clean processes okay um so but when we do all those there is generally other things that happen so if you take a billet like this and you make a component right there is a microstructural refinement that happens okay and you take away see for example this is a casting you see a huge defect or you can see the microstructure is not homogeneous right this is a cross section you see the scale here 25 mm right when so by beating and heating heating and beating you can change this make homogeneize this structure right and you can get a lot of different kinds of microstructures these are you see the, this is just very uh, uh, the tip of the iceberg there are so many different kinds of internal microstructures that you can get okay now with that as the background what is additive manufacturing or you see additive manufacturing is 3d printing's technical name okay so you all know about 2d printing when you printed a sheet of paper right you printed a letter or uh, you know uh, using the computer printer you have you are printing in 2d so you take a sheet of paper and you are uh, um, essentially uh, uh, spraying ink at wherever you want and that ink dries and that's how you get a printed uh, letter okay that is a two dimensional printer but when you say 3d printing you build one layer after the other to make a three dimensional structure metallic components for example so why is it called additive manufacturing okay so you see here um you will add one ring after the other to make this ball okay now whereas uh, conventional manufacturing or is called subtractive manufacturing what you do is you take a big block of metal or plastic and then you machine away okay to get this block you need to machine away to get this you know this ball whereas here you adding one layer after the other one ring after the other now what is one can ask what is the advantage right now here when you talk about uh, the conventional manufacturing or subtractive manufacturing 
you are losing a lot of material all this extra material that you machine this waste right it goes it has to be recycled whereas here you do have zero waste that is one advantage the second thing that you can imagine is if you want to make a hollow ball a ball which is hollow inside is empty right that's not possible here what you need to do is basically make two uh, hemispheres or uh, and then put them together and it, in, it adds complexity right whereas here you can make a hollow uh, ball so you can make complex shapes with uh, this additive manufacturing technique okay and it actually turns out if you observe nature right the birds how they build their nest is like that they do essentially uh, bottoms up they take uh, this uh, they collect this uh, twigs or uh, uh, grass uh, strands and etc and build their structures right so nature does 3d printing you know it's bottoms up as a approach whereas the conventional manufacturing is um, the other way around it's a top down approach right so we are want to do this 3d printing uh, in a in bottoms up approach and now uh, this technology is coming up big time and all kinds of parts are being built okay um this is uh, in aerospace applications in automotive uh, applications because you can do rapid manufacturing rapid prototyping uh, biomedical parts so for example if somebody uh, by misfortune loses a, uh, something right some part they can actually take the dimensions exactly uh, make that part as it suit required for that biomedical tools um so so on and so forth in building and construction in fact people are talking about 3d printing of houses actually it's already being done in dubai and places like that so this is going to change the way we manufacture things not just uh, metallic components but including buildings and bridges etc okay and toys obviously so uh metals case what we do is we take powders so essentially this is where um uh, digital technology and uh, can manufacturing come together so if you want to build for example you see the product on the right side here okay um so uh this is a, a, a turbine um basically turbine blades and turbine important part right so you have the design and then what you do is you have a cad design you, you will learn in cad about cad design in engineering here and what you do is basically you spread the powder you take a laser and hit it wherever you want to melt it and keep layer after layer after layer and you build this 3d part okay this is how you can do now uh, you may not be aware but for example manufacturing of this kind of a part using conventional manufacturing would take so many different steps so much wastage of material and also it will have it's it's not going to be one part right several parts put together then it will come like this whereas when you do 3d printing it's one part there are no joints no rivets no fasteners anywhere okay essentially what we are doing is we are uh, building line by line one each line overlapping like this and then you build a layer and then these layers are um, put together to make a three dimensional part so it's a line by line layer by layer manufacturing it's a bottom up approach as i mentioned okay and uh, for example uh, if you printed any document you would have known hp hewlett packard right some of you will probably go and join that company they are big into two dimensional printing printers are most of the printers are made by uh, hewlett packard hp right computers laptops as well as printers now they developed uh 3d printing as well where uh, where here what they do is basically uh they take uh, powders and uh, then they uh, spread uh, an ink so this what we call binder it binds selectively wherever you want and they keep building parts like this okay the finished part is uh, shown with a orange triangle here okay and then center this so this is how you can also make three dimensional parts this is called binder jetting okay and uh, there is uh, one more technique called directed energy deposition so you take um, metal melt it and deposit wherever you want and this is very important for uh, repair technology so if you have a part uh, somehow it's worn off you can repair it okay 
Um, so you can see these kinds of variety of complex shapes. These are actual photos of uh, printed parts, metallic parts, and you see how complicated they are. And uh, you can um, build them in one shot. You don't need 100 different steps, manufacturing steps. So that is the key advantage of 3D printing. And this is going to change the whole thing because uh, so, so far, we, they talk about three stages of industrial revolution. Remember, I talked about industrial revolution. First one is locomotives and uh, this thing. Uh, second happened after World War II. And now we are in information technology revolution, right? And they, they talk about fourth industrial revolution, which will change where digital technology and real manufacturing technology will come together and make uh, things great uh, again. So there are lots of advantages here. Uh, if you go to an industry, right, uh, manufacturing industry, they only deal with a particular part, only steel parts, let's say. Whereas, for example, uh, with this uh, 3D printing, you can manufacture whatever you want. Today, you can print a toy. Tomorrow, you can print uh, uh, an important engineering structural element, etc. Okay, And it uh, makes low inventory cost. A lot of these kinds of things that happen. Okay, but there are uh, questions about it, uh, you know, because it's a new technology, and uh, we are never going to be happy just putting them as it is. We want to make sure they work. The, that is what we call benchmarking in engineering. Okay, and uh, we also have to keep the cost very low, and there are other uh, very serious technical aspects that we need to make sure before we deploy these uh, things. So. We are quite excited, but at the same time, we have to make sure that uh, engineering uh, parts uh, are um, will perform as expected. Uh, let me tell you here something interesting, right? Most of you are going to be engineers, right? So, what does uh, a scientist? How does a scientist and an engineer differ? A scientist uh, gets. I don't know how many of you know what is Eureka moment. You know, um, so. When Archimedes discovered the principle of Archimedes, right? You know, the buoyancy factor. He ran naked, uh, uh, shouting Eureka, Eureka, right? That's what Eureka moment is because he found something unexpected. He discovered something unexpected, right? Scientists get excited when they find something that is that they didn't expect. On the contrary, engineers, we want to design things that would perform as expected, right? So when, for example, when we launch, a, a, so the ISRO, ISRO scientists, engineers launch something, they precisely want things to happen. It has to detach from the primary booster racket at such a specific location. The next one, you know, satellites have to be deployed at specific orbit, exactly, right? Then only we get excited. So engineers get excited when things happen as they are expected. We, that is what engineering means. We have to design to the precision. They, the component that I design have to be, perform or the database or the computer, anything that I make has to be, uh, perform as expected in terms of efficiency, in terms of longevity. Okay. So uh, in terms of these new parts, we have to ensure that they perform as expected, and that is the key challenge going forward. Okay, so um, people talk about this as yes, the third industrial revolution. This is uh, a few years back. The Economist actually shown this. So, so you see this gentleman here is sitting before a computer. On the other hand, uh, on the other end, the manufactured products are coming. It can be aeroplanes or a hammer or a car, anything, right? So. This is the uh, people excite are excited about this through the third industrial revolution. And when you graduate from SRM University in four years time, you will see a lot of this, you know, that will be changing the face of the world, how things are manufactured and you will be part of it. So you, um, it's, you need to start preparing for yourself for these kinds of changes that happen. I talked about climate change. I talked about some the very way we manufacture things that is going to change. Okay, um, so let me close with these two um, quotes. Okay, so always remember you came to uh, university uh, for education. Okay, 
and you will acquire you already are educated to some extent and you will acquire the most powerful weapon uh, which you can use to change the world education okay so don't forget that try to get yourself as much knowledge you have to have infinite hunger for knowledge right you should never be happy you know with if you read one book say i will read more books and uh, you know and keep on doing that so and as i told you knowledge nobody can take away your money they can take away but your saraswati knowledge nobody can take away so keep that and try to acquire as much knowledge as possible so as uh, bb king said the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you so that is something that you want to keep that's why you want to acquire more and more knowledge so that you can change the world and we uh i when i say we as a somewhat older generation we look forward to you to contribute you know especially given how world is changing uh with climate crisis and other kinds of challenges that are in front of us so thank you very much for your attention and i hope you have a wonderful um time at uh, srm university andhra pradesh um, learn uh, and turn out to be the finest citizens of the world um, as we all hope you will be thank you very much thank you sir with your permission can we take few questions sure the first question is uh, sir because of extreme use of coal there is a wide range of change in climate affecting us in different ways hmm. what do you think that we youth can do to stop this climate crisis this is by rishika thank you rishika yes uh, okay now uh you can start simple things right you know minimize consumption of uh water power uh support you know or uh, vehicles you know which all uh, so, so because as an individual you can start there you know recycle plastic maybe not use as much as possible in the first place and uh, uh, uh so make sure uh you do not contribute uh to the global pollution in the smallest way that is where you can start the other thing that you can do is as you you know you educate yourself you know at at srm you will have a lot of opportunities to do how best to counter this right what is the scientific see ultimately the solution has to be scientific if i want alternative fuels right how you know the science has to offer and that has to be engineered you know once a scientist discovers it engineers has to make it so in you know as an individual where can i contribute you know what excites me you of course you have to get excited and then say hey this is something that i will master be master it and do that so that is how see ultimately you know uh, a sea is made of many drops of water right each of us has to contribute one person cannot change it but by saying that i can since i cannot change it i will leave it to somebody also will not solve the problem so all of us have to get together and i, I you know somebody i just read the other day see there we are already committed when we say i say we human race is already committed to the greenland's ice melting okay so it's not going to be uh, reversed it cannot be reversed and that itself will raise the sea level by 5 meters but if we don't do anything we also will endanger arctic ice and that will raise the sea level by some 50 meters so you know uh, and the kind of changes that will happen unseasonal rains or too much heat all kinds of problems that we can have floods flash floods uh, or earthquakes it unimaginable so each of us have to do our bit okay and then also try our best to how you know uh, how do i which which is my niche which where do i have interest and how do i contribute that is the solution i think thank you sir uh, the next question is from sachidananda he is asking what is the use of 3d printing house 3d printing now house 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 yeah um, 3d printed houses are so uh, the reason is fast construction so now one of the uh, thing is see uh, 
Um, uh, the other thing that, by the way, 3D printing uses is uh, robotics, right? A lot of automation and robotics. So although in India, we don't have, uh, actually, to be honest, we also have. When I went to Bhimavaram this week and my friends were telling about shortage of uh, daily wage workers to do all the farming, right? So there is a lot of automation that is coming. So building industry, for example, is uh, concrete is another, by the way, major polluter. In addition, uses requires a lot of manpower, right? Manpower shortage. So if you can automate it, right? 3D printing basically of buildings, you can construct reproducibly fast. So if there is a, say, earthquake somewhere, you can basically take and print quickly uh, the structures that are required, so fast and efficient way, and uh, um, with minimum number of uh, uh, human labor, right? That is another advantage. So, um, of course, you know there are disadvantages. It may be a costly process, but uh, you know uh, things like this are possible. Right? Thank you, sir. Hmm. Next question is from Karthik. He says, "Sir, all of us have started using e-bikes nowadays." By when do you think there will be charging ports on roads for e-bikes, <laughs> just like petrol pumps? <laughs> um, okay, uh, not far enough, far away. Okay, let me tell you this. So in the US, you will find everywhere, all right, uh, chargers, not uh, for bikes, maybe Tesla kind of things, right? Uh, I am in Singapore, right? I've been living there for three years. So Singapore made a conscious decision to move over to electric uh, vehicles. So they already started, you know, they didn't have infrastructure for, you see, anytime you have electric car, you need charging, right, ports. So they are going to put subsidized. So I have a feeling that uh, for e-bikes, uh, you will soon have it, you know, where you basically pay a charge and you get charged very accelerated. So there, again, think of the technological challenges that come about. Right. You see, you want to park on, you know, you want to charge it at home. That's not an issue. You come in the night and put it up, plug it up. And next morning you're ready to go. But if you're on the road, right. So it has to charge very fast. It, you know, you don't have time. You, you plug it in and go into have a cup of coffee or a sandwich to eat or a lunch. And then by the time it should be charged. So rapid charging. Right. So the, the, then you need the batteries that can do that. And that battery has to last long. You know, right now. If you buy electric vehicle, uh, Reva makes it, uh, Mahindra's bought it, right? That vehicle major cost is the battery, right? And after a few years, battery will go die and then you have to replace and it's another major investment. Otherwise, my regular running cost is very low compared to petrol car. So uh, how, how, how to make sure this rapidly chargeable battery, how long will it you know, make it last long? That is the thing. Okay, and it uses lithium ions, and there is research going on at SRM AP. How to re lithium is a very valuable resource. Not many people have it. How do you replace it? So there are lots and lots of. Once we go into the details, lots of challenges like that. But yes, this is the uh, you know uh, how do you get distributed power uh, to charge wherever you want? And these are all the challenges. Both science and engineering have to come together to solve this. Thank you, sir. Sarayu has a question here for you. She is asking, can the agriculture and industry go hand in hand? Absolutely. <laughs> they have to, not can. They have to. See, um, actually, to think that they don't already is would be a wrong thing. Now, uh, I do not know where you are from, Sarayu, but for, for example, people uh, in neighboring state uh, neighboring districts, East and West Godavari districts, if you go around, you will see a Sir Arthur Cotton uh, statues all over the place. Now, he is one of the finest engineers that uh, have, you know, you can, people who, you know, Professor V.S. Rao is here, he can tell you the stories, you know, Vice Chancellor. So he was finest engineers. Apparently, he would know, you know, his bed, if there is a small change, he will know. He designed, he constructed the Dhavaleswaram Bridge, right? And, uh, uh, sorry, uh, barrage, uh, not barrage, okay? And that made the land around fertile, you know, because there was land available, they dug canal, canals and whatnot, right? This is, I, as since I'm from East and West, both the districts, I know. So that is engineering, civil engineering. Sir Arthur Cotton was the, one of the finest engineers. And that made agriculture possible, right? Uh, in the sense of cultivating large amount tracts of land. So it's already happened, you know, um, engineering 
of uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, fertilizers pesticides right and uh, engineering of uh, automated uh, uh, tools uh, machines to cut uh, you know a crop uh, etc so that agriculture and engineering always have been going hand in hand it's not that you don't see it but it going forward because of this climate changes etc it becomes even more so what happens is if you have a, a, a lot of rain right how do you quickly find a engineering solution to get that water away right if, if uh, otherwise the water if it stagnates you have a problem right so um, uh, there it, it is necessary because look ultimately we need water and food to survive first we have to live then only we can so agriculture engineering and a lot of this so let me tell you so for example if you go to a farmer in a remote place he would not know uh, the weather right now uh, the, uh, there are app based solutions see how do now weather prediction happen because if he knows tomorrow it's going to rain maybe he will postpone cutting of the crop right so that weather prediction is possible because of the satellites and that's an engineering product right so and now apps are available okay which will tell them uh, how, in an hour to hour changes in weather so that they can plan well also they will tell whether, when the the demand is high what is the market price when he can send the things these are all engineering products right it's an app it's just as a, 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 an app like uh, youtube or anything else so uh, engineering makes a lot of these people's life better uh, and inform make informed decisions and you this will continue on so they are going hand in hand but there is a need for you know thinking about it i am glad especially that you thought about this yes thank you yes, sir uh, the next question is from abhiraj he wants to ask how do you think 3d printing is going to affect automobile industry in future um so uh, automobile industry may take a little longer uh, aerospace industry will get affected first because uh, you can make parts uh, especially uh, uh, one of the things that i skipped is about inventory cost right so um uh, for you know parts fail engineering parts fail you know even our teeth fail our bones fail right In, you know the so whenever a part fails you need to go get replaced so the there has to be a stock of all kinds of parts right now uh, in replacing that part so if you for example uh, you can print on demand right you know just you have you have design you may have the machine so you can print it on demand right whatever part that fails so that is one thing that will happen in aerospace because the parts are much more expensive but eventually it come to automotive as well so uh they do not need to stock all kinds of parts expecting or oh, there will be failure uh, whenever any kind of part failed they'll have the design and print it so this is something that will happen in next 15 years one of the reasons automotive industry may not accept it so fast is the overriding factor for automotive industry is cost right it's absolutely overrider so unless the cost comes down a lot uh this will not happen but sooner or later it will definitely happen okay. thank you sir uh, now may i request a pro vc service a few words oh. <laughs> uh, at the outset we are highly grateful to professor ramurthy garu of nanyang technological university singapore he is a great well wisher of sr university he has been on the selection committees for faculty members some of the faculty members at the srmap have been selected with the involvement of professor ramurthy when he was at iis bangalore and also he is a member of our academic council in addition he is a mentoring some of our faculty members today morning for about 2 hours uh, he there was interaction of the faculty members of physics chemistry mechanical engineering with professor ramurthy Uh, we want to synergize and also i requested professor ramurthy to explore the possibility of establishing ntu srm joint center for 
research activities in some areas. I may not spell out now here the areas. So thus is a great well-wisher of SRM AP. Also, Ramurthy said that he belongs to very neighboring place. Thus, definitely he has interest. Now, my request to Sarayu and other students, you, are, you may be aware that NTU Singapore provides research internships. Please be in contact with Professor Ramurthy for such things. Also, NTU is a very, very reputed university. Ramurthy Garu, what is the QS ranking now? Uh, I think uh, QS ranking is in, in top 25 now. Yeah. Um, maybe I think 11 or 12, something like that. Okay. So it is such a top university. Some of you could aspire to for having higher education in NTU. Aim at that. Those who are interested in higher education, NTU is a excellent institution where you can aim it. Thus, many students will have many advantages uh, and you be in contact with Professor Ramurthy. Avati could share his email ID with the permission of Professor Ramurthy. Hmm? Uh, in fact, uh, he is very student friendly. Uh, thus, I'm sure the students got greatly benefited. As he said, the faculty members have opened the door for you now you enter as fast as you can and acquire the knowledge. Uh, Professor Ramurthy Garu, thank you very much. We'll have frequent interactions and visits hmm, to SRMAP. Yeah, you want to say something? I wanted to tell, uh, see, there is an old, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, Indian Sanskrit word, but it's all Krishito Nastis Durbiksham. Yeah. So um, hard work, you know, because some I was somebody asked about agriculture and engineering. Krushi, yeah. see the you know, work hard work will make everything possible. You know, in the other context, they talk about uh, drought or you know, whatever. But you know, in your context, if you put in the hard work, you can be real champions of the world. So thank yes, you, Professor Ramurthy Garuk, for kindly accepting our invitation. Mm -hmm and addressing uh, the fresh batch of the tech students. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Uh, our honorable VC, sir, would you like yeah. to say a few words, sir? So you muted, sir. Sir, at the very outset, let me express our gratitude for accepting our invitation to visit our uh, campus and interact with our faculty on many niche areas. And today for delivering this uh, highly scintillating, very inspiring lecture, because of some reason, I think uh, I could not join right in the beginning. So uh, 3D printing and many other things that you have given, our students will immensely benefit. So the last thing that you mentioned about the hard work, with Krishito Nasti Subhiksham. So without hard work, nothing is possible. There is no substitute. You have correctly nailed on that particular uh, point. And uh, further, you have given many other takeaways. So apart from stating about the industrial revolutions, maybe when you are talking about the first, second, third, fourth industrial revolution. So you have really uh, inspired our students with uh, the industrial revolutions and the challenges that they are going to come. And you said that they should have that uh, hunger for acquiring more and more knowledge. So I'm sure that this would uh, immensely benefit all our students. So you said, so the design stage, how it is important. So I'm sure that they got all the points that you have mentioned. As Professor Narayan Ragaru mentioned, some of our students will stay in touch with you to take the advantage of your immense knowledge in the technology areas. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I'd like to call on the MCs to propose the vote. Thanks. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure to listen to you speak. Undoubtedly, you would have made a lasting impression on my fellow freshers in the audience. I would also like to thank our honorable VC, sir, Pro VC, sir, and all the other dignitaries who have joined us here today. Thank you, 